Shalom. I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah Kradash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. I came across this photo, brothers, a while back, and I took a screenshot of it because I knew I wanted to do a lesson about it when I had the opportunity. And of course, those of us in this knowledge and this truth, we don't bow down or worship any image, but from my view, it's a great depiction of what our Lord and our Savior looks like. Because we know, according to scriptures, this current rulership has covered the faces of the judges thereof, meaning they have lied about the true image of our Lord and Savior. And also in the Apocrypha, it states that they have held open the book of the law and painted their images, okay? Because we know, according to scriptures, our Lord and Savior has hair white and woolly in texture and skin brown or darkened in browns, bronze like copper, right? Basically, meaning our Lord and Savior looks look, look like a so-called Negro, a black man. But my focus here in this particular lesson is how the nations are going to wail and fear and tremble at the coming of our Lord. But how do we know for sure? Let's go right into the precepts because that's what we do on this channel here. We filter everything through the scriptures. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. And it reads, look, he is coming with the clouds. The clouds meaning the UFOs, the chariots of Israel. That's what our Lord and Savior travels in. And every eye will see him. Everybody's going to see him. Even those who pierce them. That's going into reincarnation because it's all souls are back on the earth for their judgment. Right? The King Solomon said, I seen under the sun the place of judgment, right? Now, yes, there are some souls still in the spiritual realm. That's true as well. But most souls are back on the earth now. Let me continue. And all people on the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. Amen meaning let it be. Now, what I have here is a beautiful depiction of what that day or uh, something, <laughs> a reaction on how that day is going to be. You know, when the Lord shows up, cracking the heavens, appearing, men trembling, their hearts failing them because of fear. Watch closely. We know the first time when the Lord came, he came and likened unto a man, right? Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9, and it reads, But we do see Yahweh Shai, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of Yahweh, pardon me, by the grace of Yahweh, who is our Heavenly Father, he might taste death for everyone, and then everyone is going into the nation of Israel. Right? That's what everyone's referring to because as the scriptures state, he died to redeem those who were under the curse of the law. Who was under the curse of the law? Who was in the wilderness? Who was the law given to? The house of Israel, right? As you can remember, it says, speak to the children of Israel. Let's go from there. But the next the next time he comes, in Isaiah chapter 47, verse 3, it states, He's going to be glorified. Let me continue. Thy nakedness, thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. So you have to understand, man, the Lord is coming in a glorified body, in a glorified state, and all with all power, right? Let's go from there, because we have to remember something. In Matthew, it states, Matthew chapter 16, verse 27, for the Son of Man is going to come in the Father's glory with his angels. And then he will reward each person according to what they have done. You have to think about this. The Son is going to come in the glory of the Father. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 10. And it reads, 
on the day he comes to be glorified in his holy people to be marveled at among all who have believed. The Lord is going to look so majestic. We're going to marvel at him. You know, we look at these photos. Let me go here. We look at these photos like this, you know, various pieces of artwork that we come across. But this is a low level depiction. This is not, this doesn't, this pales in, in comparison in what he's, to what he's going to actually look like. Let's continue. This includes you, you brothers, because you believe just like I do, right? Remember the scripture that states, blessed is him who have believed and have not seen. Okay? Let me continue. This includes you, because you have believed our testimony. You believe these scriptures, man. You're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. When we break down the depiction of the Lord, you understand it, you comprehend it. The Holy Spirit is working with you. Let's go from there. Let's go from there. <clears throat> to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3. And it reads, The sun is the radiance of, the, of, of Yahweh's glory and the exact representation of his being. Think about that for a second. Even while I was putting this lesson together, I brought up so many precepts. I got to make it a separate lesson on the glory that the sun is going to come with. Right? The scripture states, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. All that Yahweh, through his son Yahweh Shai, has to reveal to us, man. We're not going to be able to imagine. He's going to look otherworldly. Let me start over, man. The sun is the radiance of Yahweh's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purifications for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Man. Let me let me see something else, brother. Bear with me one second. Let me see. Um, that's what I wanted also to the King James Version, right? And it reads, who, who being the brightness of his glory and the expressed image of of his person he's the, he's the exact he looks identical to the father you know how you see a son and a father together and they say man you all look just alike but that's how that's the same way Yahweh Shai is let's go from there first Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16 for the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command with the voice of an archangel with the trump call of Yahweh and the dead in Yahweh Shai will rise first. See, this is where <laughs> this is where that panic is that he expressed. You know, you have to view it from a spiritual lens. These are how these, these other nations and also you two-thirds are going to respond. Holy shit. Yep. There's going to be nowhere for you to run in that day. There's going to be nowhere to go, nowhere to turn. Let's continue. Because we know that the Lord is coming with wrath. He's coming to, to vindicate his saints. He's coming to bring judgment. Because we have to remember the Lord is a man of war. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 15 and 16. And it reads, See, the Lord is coming with fire. And his chariots are like a whirlwind. He will bring his anger with fury and his rebukes with flames of fire. And with us going into, that's going into those laser beams coming out of the chariots, those UFOs. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 16. For with fire and with his sword, the Lord will execute judgment on all people. I thought the Lord loved everybody, right? He's going to gather his elect and he's going to destroy everyone else and the elect are Israelites. And many will be those slain by the Lord. Let's close out with this one right here. Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 31 right let me come down to the King James Version and it reads a noise shall come even to the ends of the earth that means the Lord is going to wreak a lot of havoc and want to put a lot of people to death for the Lord have a controversy with the nations again I thought the Lord loved everyone he does it he will flee with all flesh he will give them that are wicked to the sword said the Lord right 
Remember, the Lord says, bring them here before me so that I might slay them for those that wouldn't serve the Lord. And these other nations don't serve the Lord, neither do you two-thirds. So expect this image or something like it to be seen on the day of the Lord. But I want you to magnify it times a million, right? This is, this is who's coming for us, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Shalom.